There's no doubt that the taking of the nuclear plant in Ukraine has raised the stakes in Russia's war. What could Putin's next move be here? And are there any off-ramps? Let's bring in Nina Khrushcheva. She's professor of international affairs. She's the granddaughter of former Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev. Nina, it's great to see you again. I just want to start with your ma main point here, which to me at least is that you see this as so far enhancing Putin's popularity at home. In some, yes, thank you, Kelly. In in some quarters, among some people, it it really does it enhance, because you know when the war is being fought, but it's not called a war at all. It's called a special operation. So. The Russians are technically not knowing that the city is being bombed and uh, whatever is happening on the ground is presented as the um, uh, Ukrainian insurgents uh, who want to oppress and abuse the Ukrainian people. Also, essentially, in the last 10 days, uh, yes, 10 days, every single outlet that was speaking the other version of the events rather than the the Kremlin version of events now has been uh, completely banned. The radio stations, the news TV, rain TV, the Echo Moscow, the Echo of Moscow just banned not only from their radio waves, but also from YouTube. So it's all closed. Uh, I think now the Facebook is next, or maybe it already is, uh, uh, has happened. So no information is supposed to trickle down uh, for the Russian people to mm. be told what really is going on. So they now feel, and with all the force of the sanctions, many feel that they just have to rally around the flag. You just mentioned it. We're going to get that breaking news right now, actually. Nina, stay right there. Let's bring in Julia Borston. She has the latest on Facebook's operations in Russia. Julia? That is absolutely right. Russia has blocked Facebook in the country. Russia's media regulator saying that they have seen 26 cases of discrimination against Russian media and information resources, um, and that in recent days, the social network has restricted access to accounts from Ria Novotsky, news agency Sputnik, Russia Today, and others, saying these restrictions are prohibited by federal law um, on measures to influence persons involved in violations of fundamental human rights and freedoms. So that this is what the Russian regulator Regulators saying we have reached out to Facebook's parent company Meta for comment on this. Um, this, of course, comes Kelly as Meta and Facebook have been working to tamp down on misinformation and disinformation coming out of some of those Russian propaganda, uh, Russian owned media companies. Guys, back over to you. Julia, thank you so much. Nina, this is exactly what you were just describing. So, for people who thought the headline was going to be Facebook blocks Russia, now it's Russia blocks Facebook. And you think the primary reason here is more or less to control the flow of information that gets to the Russian people. Absolutely. It is an absolute control of the information. Maybe uh, it seems to me that even on your program a few days ago, I did say that the Russians like to reciprocate. So if they're sanctioned, they're going to sanction back or whatever they're going to forbid back. Uh, say the Russians cannot travel to Europe because they cannot get visas. So Russians would say you cannot get travel to Europe because the whole world is against us and, and something like that. So basically it seems that uh, for now, at least Putin has doubled down, not only on or doubling down, not only on, on the Ukraine assault, but also on the complete assault and complete suppression of whatever was left of uh, Russian civil society. In fact, yesterday, uh, the oldest human rights organization, very important human rights organization, Memorial, uh, which was founded by Andriy Sakharov, the father of human rights, uh, was closed, was searched. Maybe it's today even. Uh, I don't remember exactly. was searched. People were harassed, uh, the, those who work there. So it really is a very important message to uh, to the Russians altogether, is that you take our version of events or you really will not have any potential life whatsoever. It's going to be North Korea on steroids. That's the message of Putin. And how is this plays out, Nina? Do you read the activity at the uh, Ukrainian nuclear plant? Well, it, also very interesting because in the Russian version of events, it, it's actually uh, the Ukrainian saboteurs who did this and then blame it for the world, for the Russians to be guilty of. So basically, it, it's it's almost like Alice, 
whatever Russia through the looking glass. So you enter this alternate reality and then that reality is presented as if it is a real one. And it does seem that most of it reality is playing out in Vladimir Putin's head because uh, yesterday he spoke and was very firm and uh, very kind of uh, very forceful at saying that everything is going according to plan and we are eliminating the Nazi elements in, in Ukraine and we are not going to stop until the very end. In fact, he spoke to Olaf Scholz, the Chancellor of Germany, and reiterated uh, the same thing without even showing that he's willing to um, uh, to back off. And it does seem that this whole play with the potential nuclear preparedness is that, is that, do you really want to test me how far I can go?